Welcome to St. Peter Lutheran Church. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our first reading for this, the third Sunday of Easter, is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and for your children. For all who are far off, every one whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. The those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from 1 Peter, chapter 1. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from futile ways, inherited from your Father, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, and Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death, and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying, that they had seen a vision of angels 
who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Do not our hearts burn within us while we talk to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven. And those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness, and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you for God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. There is a subtle but very persistent theme in the events of the resurrection as told in the Gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It shows up in the announcement that the angels make to the woman at the tomb. Listen to the angels' words, and you will hear a common thread. In Matthew's account, the angel said, He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. In Mark, the angel said, Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Luke's account is the longest. In his account, the angel said, He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you. While he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise. Did you notice the small but very important idea that each angel had in their message? Each of these accounts made it clear that an important part of the angel's message of the resurrection was a reminder that Jesus had regularly told his disciples that he would rise from the dead. They all included an emphasis on the word of Jesus. And since Jesus is God, this is an emphasis on the word of God. Jesus himself made this very clear in the reading we just heard. Jesus joined two of his disciples who were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus. That very day, two of them were walking to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Notice that Jesus did not immediately 
reveal himself to them. Instead, he first taught them from the word of God. The opening words of their conversation show how much they need this instruction. Jesus greeted them by asking a perfectly natural question. What is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? This gave the two travelers the opportunity to express their great grief at Jesus' death. In their grief, the two travelers stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days. From these words, we learn that the news of Jesus' crucifixion had spread throughout Jerusalem. Cleopas assumed that anyone who had been in Jerusalem would know all about it. Then Jesus asked one of those open-ended questions that gave Cleopas and his friend an opportunity to talk. He said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God in all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. This is a very good summary of Jesus' ministry. It even speaks of the resurrection. The words, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, even proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah. The only problem is that they did not believe that it was true. Their words showed that they knew everything they needed to believe in Jesus. Nevertheless, from their point of view, it was more like a dream than a reality. Right then and there, Jesus could have said, Here I am. The accounts of my resurrection are true. He could have shown them his hands, his feet, and his side. He could have shown them that he was alive, but he didn't. Instead, he began an intense Bible study. He said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? In beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Before Jesus revealed himself to these two disciples, he showed them Christ and Moses and the prophets what we would call the Old Testament. He taught them that the entire Old Testament points to Christ. He used the Old Testament to show these two disciples that it was necessary that the Christ should suffer as they had witnessed with their own eyes and ears. He showed them from the Old Testament that the very heart of what it meant to be the Christ was for the chief priests and the rulers to deliver him up to be condemned to death and crucified. According to the scriptures, 
This is exactly what the Christ came to do and experience. The very testimony that they gave when they explained the happenings in Jerusalem, who Jesus was, what he experienced, his suffering and death. This very testimony points to Jesus as the Messiah promised by God in the Holy Scriptures. Last week we heard John's account of Jesus appearing to the disciples in the locked room. When Thomas saw the Lord, he confessed, My Lord and my God. Jesus responded to Thomas and said, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. In today's Gospel, we heard how Jesus did that with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. In this account, Jesus pointed to the Holy Scriptures as the proof of his resurrection before he revealed himself to these two disciples. They did not know it was Jesus talking to them. Nevertheless, they believed because of the testimony of the Holy Scriptures. They believed without seeing. When Jesus first joined the disciples, they had the facts exactly right. But the facts depressed them. The facts depressed them because they did not interpret the facts in light of the Holy Scriptures. They did not understand how the crucifixion fit into the plan of God. They had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, but they did not understand that the crucifixion was the way that the Christ did the redeeming. It was as Jesus had opened the Holy Scriptures to them that they began to understand that in the crucifixion, Jesus not only redeemed Israel, but he redeemed the entire world. Jesus opened the gospel of the Old Testament to them. The Holy Spirit called them by that gospel. The Holy Spirit created faith in them, even though they did not recognize that it was Jesus himself who taught them. Not only did the Holy Spirit bring them to faith, but they became an example of those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now that Jesus had taught them from the Holy Scriptures, it was time for them to share a meal. As they talked, the two disciples drew near to the village to which they were going. Jesus acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. This is common Middle Eastern hospitality at work. There are no motels or other public lodgings. As travelers came to the end of the day, those who had farther to go acted as though that they were going to continue on their journey. Those who had arrived at their destination insisted that the other travelers stay with them and enjoy their hospitality. Hospitality included a meal. When you stayed at someone's house, they would serve a meal to you. They would bless the food and serve it to you, the guest. But something changed as this guest came to eat with these two disciples. Notice how Jesus turned the tables on his guests. He became the host and served them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Jesus was the invited guest, but he became the host. He took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it. Jesus served the two disciples. It was as Jesus served them with this meal that he finally revealed himself to them. 
This pattern of teaching and then eating is very common in the Bible. The Gospels record many meals that Jesus had with a wide variety of people. Every time there was teaching before eating. First there is teaching from the Word of God. Then there is a meal with the Christ. This meal in Emmaus was different in that it is a meal after Jesus rose from the dead. In this meal, Jesus began teaching the disciples that although they could not always see him, he was always with them. He was with them in disguise in the road as he taught from God's word. He was there as he broke the bread, and they recognized him. He was still with them, even after he disappeared from their sights. This pattern of hearing God's word and then eating God's meal has made its very way into the liturgy of the church. We follow the pattern that Jesus used as we first had the service of the word where we hear the teaching that Jesus has passed on to us through the writings of his apostles. We continue that pattern as we eat a meal with Jesus and all the company of heaven, even as Jesus gives his body and blood for us to eat and to drink. Even though we cannot see Jesus, he has promised to be with us. He is with us as we hear the word of God and the Holy Spirit uses it to strengthen our faith. Then, after we hear teaching that is based on the Word of God, we have a meal with Jesus where He feeds us His true body and His true blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus comes to us in His Word. He comes to us as His Word falls on our ears and it comes to us as the word combines with the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper. In each case, Jesus reveals himself to us. He is with us just as he was with the Emmaus disciples. We have his presence, and by his promise, he gives us forgiveness, life, and salvation. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. Our hearts have burned in us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts that we may hear and hear. Believe and believing be steadfast in this faith and hope all our days. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with water and the word of baptism. And you have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name and word and works for as long as we live. Guide us that we may purify our souls by living in obedience to your word and in brotherly love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, that she may welcome the stranger in Christ's name and manifest the unity of faith and the bonds of love. Bless Matthew, residing in our synod, Justin, our district president, Luke, our circuit visitor, and all pastors. Bless those training for church work vocations. Bless each of us as we live out our baptismal vocation worship, witness, prayer, and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard our nation, O Lord, 
that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless Donald, our President, the Congress of the United States, Lord, our Governor, and all state and local officials, that they may fulfill their offices faithfully. Bless the members of the armed forces who protect us and teach the nations the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from all our afflictions. And grant us strength to bear all our burdens, O Lord. Hear us in particular for all those whom we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stay with us, O Lord. Be our strength and weakness and our hope in time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and fear, that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory to bring to fulfillment all things, once and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept, O Lord, the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring for all your goodness and generosity. With our songs of praise, accept our tithes and offerings, that your church may have the resources to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever other things we need, O Lord, we pray you to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has made full atonement for our sin, and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.